Hi, I'm Mark Hall with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System here with Ohio State's bright and shining star, Dr. John Fulton. Our next lesson on Advanced Precision Agriculture series is Digital Agriculture. John, as we look ahead to precision agriculture, the importance of data is growing and has a larger significance. Can you tell us how this evolution is going to work out? Mark, we do, what Farm Press doesn't report today on something about not only mm -hmm. technology, but it has the word data in it. And as we think not only today, but really what's happening kind of in front of us, this, uh, just to kind of keep things um, progressing here, we're starting to call call it digital ag. And so, you know, we had talked about just kind of thinking ahead, where we're at and thinking ahead, and, and digital agriculture is, is where I think we're heading. And, and, and so uh, just kind of going through, but as we look, you know, this is kind of, there's not a company out there, uh, doesn't matter what continent uh, or type of company provide yes. an ag that doesn't have a, a, you know, something like this uh, that they've shown and so this gives you insight about where where the things are going and for some growers you know that maybe they've already uh, got a, quite a bit of connectivity on their farm but uh, the use of apps uh, leveraging consumer devices like our smartphones and uh, uh, iPads I mean that's yes. just growing I mean I can't think of the number of apps today that that you can utilize to either for information or connect right to the machine or visualize data or get access to data. So, you know, but one of the questions, not only for farmers, I mean, Mark, you know, you've been in extension for many okay. years. Where do you, where do you see yourself, you know, in, in that picture? Looking at a smartphone, talking to farmers about what they're doing. When I go to party and farmers are there, you know what we do? We get out our smartphone. Hey, Mark, have you seen this? It shows the rate. It shows what the weather's doing wherever you want to look. It shows this. It shows that. Boy, this technology is making life better, John. And every, old guys, young guys, everybody is. Give it to me. And there's not a probably a commodity meeting that you don't go no. to that. Not they probably all got smartphones and yes. and seventy percent of them are have a tablet or iPads with them and so you know this is real this whole idea around digital ag is real it's we're at the forefront of this i i i, I pinned 2012 as a, a real key where the industry said you know what we've talked about it we've tried this multiple times but uh today in 2012 or that year uh they made a commitment as a and the industry's just kind of followed and so i don't think the idea around data and and uh, the components of technology being embedded in machines is going away. This thing's here and it's here to stay. And, and so I think as whether we're extension, we're in the industry, you know, you got to be thinking about where you're going to plug in and how either you're going to supply information or help growers make money in a, in a digital way. John, the data, one thing that just baffles me is the amount of data. I was talking to Christian yesterday and he was talking to the IT guy for your old system, Biosystems, talking about terabytes of information needed a thumb drive or a drive external drive with terabyte man that that wow so much data how are we going to manage that and that's the thing it's it's bit overload today and 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 if you take that terabyte and try and upload it we we're talking about some of this cloud technology it takes a while to do that and so we've got some things to still overcome we think about rural coverage of wireless uh, and even cellular connectivity. I mean, once that happens, I think this will pr uh, even accelerate. But, uh, you know, this is uh, the ability that, like I said, we've talked about this. I mean, pe as people were connected yes. almost 24 seven, these machines are now connected, connected and it's just uh, a matter of time where we start to see more sensors, moisture, temperature, and similar type devices that are gonna be in the field, connecting the field. So, but I think the, the thing is, is apps and, and kind of thinking if you're going to serve this industry, whether it's here in the U.S., South America, Europe, or wherever. I mean, there's some countries today in Africa that, that we've worked with that uh, they don't have all the nice machines and things, but that, you know what they have? What? They have smartphones and oh, they have yes. cellular connectivity and they're taking advantage of apps. And so this thing's worldwide. And so, uh, but let's, let's just explore. This is how... I kind of based upon a, a, a report out of Iowa a couple of years ago, kind of pulled this out. And this is how I kind of begin to explain what digital ag and let's just step through and talk about this. And, and so I see it as kind of four buckets. And uh, we talk a lot about big data, 
Yes. But you know, in reality, when we look at the, the some of the things in the in the medical profession, the retail profession, uh, they're utilizing big data. But big data is really not here in ag yet. We just are not aggregated, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But we'll start with precision agriculture. We've been at that for a long time, Mark. We've been at that since you know the early mid '90s in a lot of areas of the country. But precision ag, and we'll talk. Uh, the other thing that's probably the fastest growing area in this country is prescriptive agriculture. If you go and you, and you listen to the, the precision seeding, prescriptive seeding, we, we touch on that a little bit, but it's really uh, utilizing the data to, to be informed or, or make re uh, recommendations. The other third part, third part of the leg, and you're seeing companies provide this, is really enterprise agriculture, and that's really bringing the business. And in that case, I think about it, it's not enterprise level, but it's field by field yes. understanding. It's, it's management of logistics of your machines, your grain, and bringing all that in. And the important ingredient to that is it's being informed by the precision ag technology, pulling data from it to be, do a better job of characterizing fuel and things of that nature at a true cost uh, on a field by field basis. And the prescriptive agriculture, this is what I'm doing now and the feeding that in. And so it's kind of a feel, what I would say is it's business, but it's really getting down to the detail of field by field, what, what kind of money am I making? And then, as I mentioned, big data is where we're heading. Uh, there's promise, we'll talk lightly on that in a little bit, but uh, those are the four buckets, as I explained, that when you put them all together, that's the world of digital agriculture. Kind of to bring some definition, to me, it's it, precision agriculture is quite simply this technology that we've talked about in many of our sessions, Mark, the, just the technology itself. We've been at this for nearly 20 years of bringing technology to the farm. Now it's embedded in these machines. Farmers are used to doing it. They're comfortable with it. And whether I buy or lease a new machine, it's already there. It's readily available for me to use, just like we talk about air conditioning in a car. You know, I don't check that box anymore. It yes. just comes. Yes. And then the other thing is really basic site-specific services. And as an example, it's going out and either grid or uh, zone sampling and then putting a recommendation of that. That's very basic. Uh, I measure and I react or, you know, I, I determine how much. And so that's precision agriculture, Mark, uh, in just very simple terms. Today we talk about this. This is, this is uh, in the North America market and, and I think even in Australia and Europe you're seeing growth but this prescriptive agriculture. Uh, but that's where we're really utilizing data, uh, collecting it uh, to drive information, drive recommendations. A lot of times we think about prescriptions, uh, but also um, you know, being able to make those site-specific decisions. And so really it's getting down to that subfield level of, of being able to manage the variability. variability. And I would say, you know, a grower in a lot of areas of the country today are probably sharing data with three people in their area. You know, they got their seed person, they got their retail or cooperative that's providing potentially fertilizer. Uh, they could have their uh, dealership and they could have their agronomist. I mean, there's easily yes. three or four people they're beginning and they're taking that data and they're generating prescriptions or some kind of information from it, utilizing, and that's what, what I would call prescriptive agriculture today. Kind of to the third, um, and this is uh, just uh, as an example, in the United States, it's very common to hear the folks are implementing verberate seeding in the prescriptive world. Uh, verberate nitrogen's becoming popular, especially in corn. Uh, and then adapting nutrient management. Maybe as an example, as I'm taking my yield maps and, and generating removal maps, I'm coupling that with my precision sampling schemes and looking at that. And, and so all of a sudden I'm using the data and I'm refining my fertility application program at a site specific level. So those are just some very common, there's many more out there, fungicides and et cetera that we see, but those are, to me, those are the three main ones that you see folks are really starting to utilize out there as it relates to prescriptive agriculture. The other thing in, in enterprise agriculture, um, we talk about ERP and, and um, again, this is kind of the business field level management at the farm, bringing that to the forefront. I can look at, you know, things like not only cost and if I add, you know, if I, uh, mix up my, my crop rotation, I can, I can model that. I can look at scenarios and decide what I want to do. 
Uh, if I had a planter, I had a combine, or I had another truck. I mean, these are things that, that I see, again, that we can do. But, uh, but this is a, a heavily growing field, and, and at least in the U.S., you're starting to see large, larger farmers take advantage of this for them to, to better manage their bottom line. And so that's kind of the enterprise agriculture. And then the thing that uh, gets a lot of attention, especially since uh, 2012, is this, this thing about big data, Mark. Uh, we've got a lot of data. Uh, in fact, you were saying, well, how much data are we, are we generating? Well, I can tell you, based on some of our uh, projections today, a corn grower can be grow, uh, contribute a half kilobyte of data per corn plant per year. Wow. And you say kilobyte, but well, how many, pl how many plants are out there? 42,000 an acre. You know, or 35,000, yeah. you know, and, and I'm doing 2,000 acres. You know, you've, you're talking yeah. about thumb drives earlier and about the size. Well, you take a two gig thumb drive, I can fill her up on a, real quickly with just, you know, annually. And so, um, but big data is this uh, idea that where it's just not my farm, it's, it's aggregation of data and, and then beginning to query and learn from it in different ways than ever been. Uh, if you can pull it up in a spreadsheet like Excel, yeah. that's not big data. Um, using some of our traditional databases. That's not big data. This requires all new kinds of cloud technology and such. Uh, but big data, as an example, the retail sector, you know, uses it uh, to, to see trends and uh, the likes of Google, um, the medical profession are beginning to, to do it, but it brings a whole higher order of learning uh, and, and value potentially, but we're not quite there today. I thought this would be one good, you know, kind of answer to that is, is that officially when we get to the big data, you, you, you know, you think about when we work on projects, Mark, I send you the data, right? Hey, you yeah. give me the summary and analysis and send it back. Well, once the data gets aggregated and it gets so big, you're going to have to bring those analytic pieces to the data because you just can't efficiently and effectively transmit that anymore. And so we're going to have to take the analytical tools to the data versus what we've traditionally done is taking the data to the, you know, loading it in Excel or loading it into R or SAS or whatever we were, GIS. Uh, so that's a, a good way to measure how to, what the difference is. John, do you see artificial intelligence coming in and, and looking at all this big data and be able to say that, that's problem A and that's problem B and that's this and, and get that back to the farmer because it's just so much data. How's, how's anybody or how are we going to deal with it? Yeah, and it, absolutely. And I think you're seeing companies try and uh, do that. But uh, the requirement there is you got to have a, uh, an aggregated data set in order to explore yes. and begin to learn. And so it's going to take time. I, I think we, we see those tools being built today by companies. Uh, we call it machine learning. Yeah. Those are the processes, the, the analytical pieces that are being implemented on it. But uh, we're still, I think, trying to get it to, to a level uh, and learn how to really draw value out of some of these data sets once they are uh, built. So that's, uh, you know, the four components as I see it at Digital Ag. And so that kind of brings us to this, you know, again, I think about this. So now Farmers, as they, as they look at it, they're using all this technology that could be used in like the telemetry pieces technology. And now all of a sudden I got all this data, so where am I going to store it? How am I going to share it? And if I am sharing and I'm doing it in a big data scheme, how do I remain anonymous if I, if I don't want yes. others? I, you know, I'm willing to share and I'm willing to learn from it. You know, these are now the questions and, and, and you've, you know, I talk even now that a, that a farm, it's a, it's a business, you know, yes. needs to sit down and talk about what's your digital ag strategy. You need to, you know, where am I going to store it? We were talking about using like Dropbox and Box and, you know, there's all these cloud storage, but, you know, we've got companies offering their own platforms, yes. but, uh, uh, you know, that's something that you got to kind of sit down and think about today, even as a, an individual, right, as a consumer out there. So, but, uh, but that kind of, you know, as the first part of this discussion comes in, end, I think we've kind of covered, at least as I define it, what digital agriculture, and now, now we're starting to move into all these, these issues around data today. This is exciting stuff, John. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And please watch all our Precision Ag videos. And we're going to have another one on dealing with data. So watch that. Thank you.